Hi, I'm Ken Knappenberger, an assistant professor at Florida State University. My laboratory recently published a perspective in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters describing our research on colloidal metal nanoparticles. The objective of our work is to understand how nanoparticle structure influences the optical and mechanical properties of these materials and to place our work in the broader context of nanoscale transducers. Our experimental approach combines laboratory synthesis of colloidal metal nanoparticles and their study using femtosecond laser-based spectroscopy techniques. The characteristic feature of colloidal metal nanoparticles is a localized surface plasmon resonance. The LSPR can be understood by considering a propagating electromagnetic wave incident upon the nanoparticle whose frequency matches the plasma frequency of the particle. Excitation of plasmon supporting nanoparticles using such a wave results in the coherent polarization of conduction band electrons, leaving lattice ions in their absence, and yielding large surface fields. When the second half cycle of light passes through the particle, this electrostatic distribution is inverted resulting in a large field gradient. The plasmon coherence is short-lived, about 15 femtoseconds, and is very sensitive to the surrounding dielectric. As a result, plasmonic nanoparticles can function as transducers capable of detecting dielectric changes at the nanoparticle surroundings interface. The LSPR line width reports on plasmon coherence but its analysis is complicated because it is affected by numerous processes in addition to interfacial scattering. These include bulk or intrinsic damping and radiative damping. For many particle systems, the line width is dominated by bulk damping. We have shown that by changing nanoparticle morphology, in this case to a hollow structure, the sensitivity of the LSPR to changes at the interface can be increased. Nanoparticle sensitivity can be tested in a controlled manner using femtosecond time-resolved plasmon resonance spectroscopy. Here, a femtosecond laser is used to electronically excite the nanoparticle while the LSPR is monitored as a function of time. The initial excitation generates hot electrons, forming a transient bleach, or negative amplitude signal, at the plasmon resonance. By monitoring the recovery of this bleach in the time domain, electronic relaxation can be studied. These hot electrons cool through a three-step process that involves ultra-fast electron-electron scattering, picosecond electron phonon coupling, and energy coupling to the surroundings over time scales ranging from tens to hundreds of picoseconds. The latter process heats the surroundings and changes the interfacial dielectric properties. The large difference in time scales for plasmon dephasing and interfacial heating are key to these studies. Measurements of the plasmon line width with femtosecond time resolution provides a static snapshot of the interfacial properties. A typical example is given here, which shows the parameters that can be retrieved from experiment. These are the plasmon center wavelength, peak width, and signal amplitude, all measured as a function of time. In our perspective, we use these data to describe how nanoparticle morphology influences electron relaxation dynamics and in turn the nanostructure's sensitivity to the, its environment. Another type of transducer effect can be achieved when plasmonic nanoparticles are assembled into a network. Here, two nanoparticles are separated by distances on the order of one nanometer. Upon excitation, these particles undergo electromagnetic coupling in the near field which concentrates the electromagnetic energy to the small volumes separating the nanoparticles. In this way, these assemblies can function as antennas that amplify optical signals or increase light absorption, which may be important for processes like solar energy conversion. In order to study these processes, our group carries out nonlinear optical, second harmonic generation measurements at the single particle level. In this process, light interaction with metal nanoparticles annihilates two photons from a femtosecond laser and creates one at twice the energy. By studying these SHG processes, we can learn a great deal about the properties of the nanoparticle antennas. One of the examples we describe in the perspective is the amplification of circularly polarized light, producing chiral fields. This effect is summarized here 
where the SHG intensity resulting from left and right circularly polarized fundamental light is plotted. These data can be analyzed using the equation shown here to quantify the circular dichroism present in the nonlinear optical signals. We learned that the degree of circular dichroism detected is very sensitive to the nano antenna structure. This plot illustrates the unique results obtained from several different nanoparticle assemblies, an effect that would have been washed out by ensemble averaging. Something implicit in this circular dichroism response is that there must be a contribution from magnetic dipoles to the nonlinear optical signal. As we describe in the perspective, the technique of continuous polarization variation, or CPV, measurements can be used to quantify the relative contributions from electric and magnetic dipoles to the plasmon response. CPV measurements are achieved by systematically changing the polarization state of femtosecond laser light prior to nonlinear optical measurements. SHG data obtained as a function of the fundamental polarization state can be analyzed to quantify relative contributions from electric and magnetic dipoles. Here, F represents the electric dipole component, while G quantifies the magnetic dipole. These results clearly demonstrate that plasmonic nanoparticles can be used not only for electric field amplification, but also as a magnetic field transducer to amplify magnetic fields upon optical excitation. Many unique opportunities exist to use colloidal metal nanoparticles as optical transducers. This emerging area will provide many exciting opportunities for researchers in the area of physical chemistry.